All right, welcome back to Stormworks Basics tutorial. This is going to be a new auto clutch tutorial. Uh, last clutch tutorials, people getting confused. Um, in the last tutorial, I used one of my regular vehicles that was not designed to be a uh, tutorial vehicle, so it was a little bit more convoluted. Uh, this car is designed to be more user friendly, and so let's uh, go ahead and utilize this. So let's first talk about the theory of how a clutch works. So here you have your modular engine. So your engine is creating rotational energy here. It goes through the clutch and it goes into gearbox or gearboxes. And then it goes out to the uh, wheels. All right, now if you didn't have a clutch here, what would happen is the pressure of uh, the resistance essentially of the tires would be too great for the engine to be able to turn. Uh, you wouldn't be able to get that engine started. So how does how do you do this in real life? So what you do is the engine gets turning and the clutch plates are open. So essentially you have no clutch. So it's as if this was disconnected. Is it was as if nothing was connected here because you have in game it would be say a zero. And so what this allows you to do is this allows you to spin the engine up faster. Now F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration. So the pistons of the engine, the crankshaft, all the, all the components of the engine have a specific mass. The faster you spin those, the greater the force you create. Now there's a certain force required to get the car moving. That's breakaway force. Now if the engine's not producing enough uh, force to push the car, what you're going to end up with is a stalled engine. The engine is essentially going to not be able to make enough compression to fire the cylinder and the engine stalls, right? If you drop the clutch on, say, a car um, at, without revving it up first, you're going to end up with a stalled car. And so that uh, is accomplished through the clutch here. So it allows us to rev up our engine, right? By increasing the acceleration, we're able to increase the force. And once we get that force high enough, it gives us enough energy to now uh, put the clutch plates together, i.e. in-game increase the number, and that allows us to pass power from the engine through the clutch into the gearboxes and then out to the wheels. All right, so that's just a little bit of a theory on how that works. So let's go ahead and go into the microcontroller. All right, this microcontroller is a lot simpler than the last auto clutch tutorial. Uh, where I just used a regular vehicle. Uh, this one's set up to be more user friendly. So let's understand and let's go through that theory again. Okay. So we need to increase the RPM or RPS in this case of the engine to get enough force to be able to move the car forwards. If we do not have enough force, we need to decrease the clutch. So essentially, what we're using here is 5 RPS. So if we have a number greater than 5 RPS, it says, hey, we have enough force, start adding in clutch. Now, as you add in clutch, you're adding in resistance. And so that's both going to allow your wheels to move, but it's also going to try to slow your, your uh, engine down. So you need enough force to be able to move the car. So let's look how I do this. So first thing we're going to do is I have a greater than here. Now this greater than, it connects up to my to composite off of my seat. Now what does that do? That's my throttle. So essentially I only want the clutch to go in when I'm pushing the W key in this case. All right. So that's what this section is. So if my W key is greater than zero, I want that's one of my conditions to add clutch. My next condition to add clutch is right here. It's greater than. If my RPS, which is up here, if my RPS is greater than 5, again, that gives us enough force to move the car. So right here we have if my W key is greater than 0 and if my RPS is greater than 5, we want to go to an up-down counter and we want to start adding clutch. All right, and so let's look at the up-down counter. So we have an increment here. That's how quickly or how slowly we add or remove clutch. This here is our clamp. It's enabled and we have a zero which is no clutch and we have maximum which is 100% clutch. Alright, so if we are pressing the W key and 
the RPS is greater than 5 RPS, we want to start putting more clutch in. That will start to engage the clutch packs that will allow us to pass energy from the motor to the wheels. All right. Now, if we look here, I have a, so this is our same condition. If the RPS is greater than 5, right, but I put it through a knot, all right, so that's essentially saying if the RPS is less than 5, I want to decrease. So I'm using the down node on my up-down counter. So what this is saying is every time that my engine dips below 5 RPS, it reduces the clutch, taking load off of the engine, allowing the engine to spin up faster. Every time you add load to the engine, it's causing it to um, have to do more work. And so unless you're above five, you do not have enough energy to do the work. So all it's doing is, this is simulating what you would do in real life. So for example, I, I've been driving tractor trailer for, oh, what was it now, 11, 11 years. And so I drive a manual, you know, all day long. And so what I do is I gently start to take off the clutch as I rev the engine. Now. What that's going to do is as I rev the engine, that's increasing my force. And as I let out a little bit of clutch, what it's doing is it's allowing the engine, to, the clutch to slip a little bit. And so it's passing some of the energy through. If I just let go of the clutch pedal, it would probably stall the vehicle, right? You'd be uh, adding too much resistance too quickly. So you need to get that, that vehicle moving. So you need to increase your thrust and you need to gently add in your clutch. And so this gently adds in. Now some people will tell you, oh, just have it as an on-off switch. No. Let's do this like we would in real life, and that's how you make it work properly. So um, right here, as you can see, if it dips below 5, we will reduce clutch. So every time, so essentially it's going to be like my foot on the clutch pedal. My foot will go up, down, up, down, up, down, gently, and that's called feathering the clutch. You want to add a little clutch, and then as the as the engine slows down too much, you want to you want to reduce some clutch, and so that will allow you to gently feather it in until you get moving. Once you get moving, the clutch can be at 100%. And so that's what this will do: is once the car gets moving, there's very little resistance, right? An object in motion tends to stay in motion, and an object at rest tends to stay at rest. So because the object wants to stay at rest. We need to feather the clutch to get moving. Once we're moving, the clutch will stay at one. All right, and then the last element here is, if we look here, um, this is just telling us if we're in neutral or uh, right here, if we're uh, starting our engine, we want zero clutch. Okay, so we essentially want to, uh, when in, we're in neutral, we don't want the clutch engaged. That's all this is telling us, and that's zero in our clutch. That's telling us don't engage the clutch if we're starting our engine, right here, or if our gear is zero, right? That's neutral. And then that goes to the clutch. So pretty simple. Let's see how it works um, in game. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump in here, and let me figure out how to start this up again. All right, so six is start, stop. All right, so we're started. So now this is an automatic transmission, so all I need to do is press WRS. So now let's watch some of our gauges. So we have wheel RPS, we have torque, we have engine RPS, gear indicator, and we have, I don't know what that dial is. I think that might be gear position. So let's look at our engine RPS. So we're below five, right? Okay, now because we're below five, if we look at our clutch, we have zero clutch, all right? So let's actually do this really quick. We should be able to see it with the engine, but let's look where our clutch is connected, right here. Okay, it, it is right here. That dial is clutch. That's what that dial is. Now let me just double check that that's still clutch. Clutch, clutch. Okay, so this is showing us our clutch. All right, so we'll be able to watch our clutch here. So I started the engine. We're below four. We're below five RPS. Now remember, if we're below five RPS, it's not going to give us any clutch. Right here is our clutch, zero. We need two conditions to add clutch. We need to press the W key, and we need to be above 5 RPS. So let's start pressing the W key. Now you'll notice, see how it adds clutch, and it lets go of clutch? Now why is it doing this? Why is it going up and down, up and down? Because the brake's on, right? We're fighting the power of the brake, so it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's 
right? It's trying to go, but because the brake set, it won't go. So now let's release the parking brake. Now we have less resistance, right? The parking brake's disengaged, the car can now roll. So now let's go and watch what the clutch does. So see how it did that little hesitation? That's exactly what your foot would do. If you release the clutch too fast, right, you're going to start to stall the car. So the car automatically reduces the clutch when it needs to. Now, as you see, we're traveling. We're at, we're at a full clutch. We don't need to clutch anymore. We have enough energy, and right, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So let's go ahead and let's stop. As you see, once we stop, it put ourselves... It uh, put the clutch to zero, right? Because we don't want the engine engaged when we're we don't want the clutch engaged when we're stopped. So let's watch it again as we go forwards. There it goes. It's adding clutch, right? It had that little hesitation. That little hesitation is preventing us from stalling, and that's how an auto clutch works. So let's bring it back to the workbench, and let's uh, look at it one more time. So it's very simple here. We'll go through the logic nice and slowly here. So this is greater than. If our W key is greater than zero, that t that's if I'm pressing the W key. And if RPS is greater than five, now this number is going to change. If you have a big, huge, tr big, huge, heavy truck with a small, tiny motor, you might need this to be a very big number. You might need to be 10. If you have a big, huge motor and a tiny little car, maybe this could be a smaller number, like, you know, 3.5. You know, it all depends on your torque. If you, you know, the higher the RPS of the engine, the more torque you're creating. So this number you might need to tune. So five's not always going to work. Five works well for this car. But if you have a big truck with a tiny little engine, you need to rev it really high to get a lot of torque. If you have a big motor and a small car, you need very little, you know, you need to rev it very low to get a lot of torque because the mass of the engine is much larger. Okay. So if W is greater than zero and RPS is greater than five, here's the and, we want to start to increase our clutch. If RPS is less than or if RPS is not greater than 5, same thing. You could either put a less than here or you just put a not. We want to decrease clutch. And then if we're, we have our gear 0, which is neutral, or we're starting our engine, we want to have 0 clutch. All right, so very simple there. All right, so if anyone has any questions, please put them in the comments below. Um, hopefully this is a little bit more clear. All right, thank you for watching.